Okay, Joey Jackson, what do you make of the testimony that prosecutors used for uh, to uh, go against uh, uh, Mr. Holmes, Dr. Rose Marie, and how important is that testimony to show the jury a uh, specific sure. thing that he was not taking it? This is the defense, of course. And what happens is, let's just, let's, yeah, let's talk about three things. The first thing is what was noted in that direct examination, which is where the defense asked questions to the expert. And that's the obvious thing, is that this is not an exact science. And as not being an exact science, nothing's infallible, and certainly any system could be gamed. So not, let's not take the conclusion that he wasn't faking it with absolute certainty. Certainly, as she admitted on the stand, you know, there's no test that's infallible. Certainly, something could be faked or overcome. But the second and most, more important thing than that, before I get to the third, is that there's a distinction between mental illness and faking mental illness and insanity. There's a major distinction between the two. You can be mentally ill but not insane. And so I don't really have any doubt, quite frankly, having followed the trial, having looked at what he did, that he has some mental illness. The guy was a problems person. I think that anybody who could, you know, dress up uh, as he did uh, and go into a movie theater and buy glocks and guns and, you know, AK-47s and do all the booby trap his house so that when the police went to it after, you know, uh, they might be injured. Anybody who kills 12 people and injures 70 is mentally ill, in my view. Uh, so that's not the issue. The issue is whether he was sane. And if you look at insanity, as that definition is defined in most jurisdictions, in particular we're talking about Colorado, did he know right from wrong? Mm -hmm. That's the question. And in the event that he did know right from wrong, he gets another bite of the apple, which is irresistible impulse. Even if he did, could he help himself? Could he form the mental state? And, of course, as we know, just as an aside, in Colorado, it's one of 11 states where the state, the prosecutor, has to prove sanity beyond a reasonable doubt. In the other jurisdictions, the defense has to take it upon themselves to show that their client was insane, and they have to establish that. In this jurisdiction, very important, the prosecution must show that he's sane. Now, be that as it may, again, you can't tell me that someone who does all, engages in all the acts of premeditation, meaning going and purchasing the weapons that he purchased, uh, in planning to do what he did, in putting on a vest, in dressing up, in going to a theater, in making the you know, cognitive decision to open fire and shoot and kill people, and then stay and surrender to the police, and then tell the police he booby-trapped his home, I, that seems to me that that's pretty planned, premeditated, and thought out. And so no matter what you say in terms of his mental, mental illness and whether he's faking it, fine. He may not be faking mental illness, but I think it's another burden to establish whether he was insane. And I just don't think that the defense will be able to establish that. The final thing that we should point out regarding that testimony is that, you know, in math they say that there are lies and statistics. Well, in criminal trials, there are experts and there are experts. And so if you listen to the experts that testified on behalf of the prosecution in their case, he knew exactly, that is, the defendant here, the murderer here, knew exactly what he was doing. And he was, without question, saying when he did what he did. Now you have the defense experts who are saying the opposite. He's insane, not faking, mentally ill, knows what he's doing, doesn't know what he's doing, excuse me. So now you have a battle of the experts, and it's left up to a jury when you have conflicting experts to use their common sense and good judgment. And I think on balance, once they evaluate the nature of what he did and how he did it, I think it's a very, very difficult uh, burden for the defense, really, to overcome. It's a major hurdle. And that is, I think, the jury will conclude that he knew what he was doing. He plotted it, premeditated it, and they'll find him guilty. And the other thing is, I mean, there are lives here that are lost. There are lives that have been changed forever. And I think that's going to weigh very, very heavily on a jury's mind. So was he mentally ill? Did he need therapy? Was he a problem person? Yes. Did he send his uh, therapist a uh, 
essentially, you know, a document asserting that he just his mind was broken and a, you know a document and a book describing who he was and what he did. Yes. But I just don't know that that meets the definition for insanity. In fact, I believe it does not. And I think he'll ultimately be found guilty.